Hello class, this video is going to cover correlation within Microsoft Excel and have a little bit of commentary that might help drive home some points about why it's important and what it can tell us. So the video should be about 10 to 15 minutes long because of that commentary. This video was inspired by a recent conversation I had with a student when that student realized that I also am a Kansas City Chiefs fan, uh, being in Minnesota you'd think Vikings or Packers, but I'm kind of immune to that rivalry because they're not in our conference. So occasionally they play games, and I would love to be able to go to the stadium and watch when the Vikings and Chiefs play, but uh, it's out of my budget and or uh, just timeliness. However, I thought it might be fun to look at some statistics here. So we are taking a break from looking at business data, you know, customers, products, suppliers, uh, things like that. And we're just going to have some fun here and look at some Kansas City Chiefs statistics for the current season, 2022-2023. So what I got here is I've got games played, receptions, targets, yards, and touchdowns. This is for what we would call receiver data. So the very first thing that I want you to think about, and this is especially true even with business data when you're looking at customers, or employees perhaps, because these are employees, right? We don't often think about the NFL and the teams as being companies and you know businesses and organizations and employees, but they are employees. And they have performance measurements and metrics, just like an, an employee or salesperson might as well. Um, so what we got here is games played, receptions, targets, yards, and touchdowns for receiving. Now, if you canvas the data to understand what you have, we're going to look around. We have running backs, tight ends, another running back, running back, tight end, running back, tight end, full back, and we have a quarterback. Now, you might say, that's weird. Is that an error in the data set? Well, no. You could do flea flickers, which were very popular in the John Elway Broncos era. Um, you could have a situation where the ball is sent to the running back, uh, and then the quarterback is a receiver uh, for a play or something to that effect. Uh, there could be unique scenarios where that could occur. Now, that said, you need to decide as the analyst whether it's appropriate to continue to use that data. And what I mean by that is it's an anomaly. We all know it, right? We all know that quarterbacks are not their common receivers. They're not eligible as a receiver all the time in plays and things like that. So I would argue that we could remove that data point. Okay. So as a data analyst, you have to do a good job of understanding your data set so that you can understand that there are some situations where you just need to strip out that data point. Okay. So Patrick Mahomes, wonderful, wonderful player. Uh, I'm sure he's a great guy. Never met him before, but would, would love to. Um, He's gone. He's gone out of the data set. Okay, so one thing I want to look at here is uh, there's a couple things that we could do with this data. We could strip out the position. Uh, we could do that so that we have another way to study the data and compare just tight ends versus wide receivers versus running backs. But in this particular data set and this particular approach, I'm not concerned about that. I just want to do some correlations. So what do we want to correlate it against? Well, I'm thinking games played is a pretty uh, standard number. So I'm going to compare all of these things to games played. Right? You can do different, you can do a correlation between receivers and tar, re, re, you know, receptions and targets. In other words, how many times were they the target of a ball versus how many times they caught it. Now you can do other statistics on that, right? Like you could do uh, receptions to targets. So you could say, what's the percentage of receptions based on number of targets, right? Pretty simple to do, pretty nice, easy to go. But that is not correlation. That's not the focus of this video. Okay, so here we go. Uh, correlation, there's different ways you can do this, but I want to do it as simple as possible for you. Limbs paid to receptions, okay? Now one could argue I could do some concatenates here, but if you don't know what a concatenate is, I'm not going to... Uh, focus that time. So we're just going to keep manually changing this to um, targets and we're going to change this one to yards and we're going to change this one to touchdowns 
and I made an extra one there so we can just delete it. Now, if you get a data set like this and you start producing data and you're like, hey, it's cut off, you can double click this, but eventually your, your, your data set's gonna be bigger than your screen. So what I recommend you do is you highlight this row of data and you go up to wrap text and then just move it around a little bit so you can still display everything, but it's just fatter up here now for viewing. Okay, so there we go. Got the, uh, that set up here. Now we're gonna use the correlation function. I'm gonna do it one time, pause the video and have it all done for you. So I'm gonna correlate games played and then I'm gonna correlate or put it in my array, the receptions. Now I'm gonna hold shift control down to grab all the data. And it's very important here, if you've never done a correlation before, you wanna make sure that the number of elements in your array for array one is the same as the number of elements in array two. In other words, you can't have an array of 15 and then an array of three. You're gonna get an error. In fact, let's just pretend that's true here, show you what it looks like. NA, you're gonna get an, an NA, okay? So the way to fix that is make sure that we go down to row 16 as well here, grab all that data, Bob's your uncle. Now the thing about correlation is a lot of people like to think, oh, my data looks like this, so I must have to double click. No, you don't. In fact, what's happening here is your data is moving down. Um, correlation just compares an entire uh, array of data, a, a pattern of data, a match of data, relationship between data. Um, there is no point in doing this stuff here, okay? Now, what we'll do here is we'll freeze the panes I know I just said I was going to freeze the video. I meant freeze the panes and lock in B and just drag across here. And now I have the different correlations. Now, data ink ratio from Edward Tuft says knock out all those decimals. They're pointless unless all of your data is like a 0.46 or 0.49 or 0.47, which is pretty darn close, but it's not the same, uh, especially a 0.22. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. The relationships are all positive. In other words, if this number is high, we will expect this number to be high. So if GP is high, REC should be high. Positive relationship. Now that doesn't mean it's because it's a positive number. It means that just both numbers are in the same direction. They're both positive. So if you had two negative numbers, you could still have a positive relationship as so long as both numbers are negative. But in this case, um, we have you know, positives. Okay, same thing here, same thing here, same thing here. Now, I would argue that these are relatively similar. Uh, and, you know, 0.46 to the 0.49 or the 0.47. So, put simply, there is a similar relationship. We could argue that the relationship is very similar between receptions, targets, and yards when considering games played. So if you're going into a business meeting, you might have these stats here. Let's say this is about customers or employees, uh, about sales representatives, um, how many sales they make, customer conversions, things like that, whatever it would be. And you've got just one talking point. You could just argue the correlation between games played and these stats range from 0.47 to 0.49. You don't have to list all of this in your PowerPoint slide deck or sit here and talk about it for five minutes just because you have different ones. Uh, and then you can say with exception to touchdowns, which is 0.22, and that makes sense to me. Why does that make sense? Because there's a heck of a lot of targets and receptions that end up with just a few yards. Uh, but if you think about it, how many touchdowns are actually scored in a game? Uh, certainly not uh, 10, you know, maybe you have some high scoring games, but if you think about it, there's 10 touchdowns, then that's 35 to 35 as a game, so to speak, or some, you know, you know, number within that, right? Like 10 touchdowns times seven, assuming just an extra point kick and, and, and nothing else, no field goals, nothing like that. Uh, if you're just straight up talking touchdowns with extra points, uh, things like that, they're a lot less frequent, though there might not even be, uh, I mean, there's still a relationship, right? The more games you play, the more likely you have a chance of getting a touchdown, but look at this guy here, Sky Moore. 16 games played, 22 receptions, 33 targets, 250 yards, no touchdowns. Okay? Now these over here, I mean, here's another one. Michael Burton, 17 games, two receptions, three targets, 11 yards, uh, no touchdowns. He didn't play that much. 
didn't play that much. But then you look at Sky Moore up here, you might think, was he an anomaly? How many more people are like Sky Moore? Well, here we go. We got a guy right here, Noah Gray, uh, similar to Sky Moore. But not quite, I mean, similar situation, just one touchdown, a few more yards, similar targets, a few more catches. Uh, games played is very similar. Then you start investigating, okay, why is Sky more different than Noah Gray, if that's important to you? Well, did Noah Gray, uh, or did, sorry, did Sky more drop more balls? Like, did he actually have them in his hand and then he dropped them? Or was there a really strong defense and they were swatted away? Or were they interception plays where Sky didn't have a chance to get it? Uh, is there something about being in the tight end position that allows Noah an advantage in certain plays? Is there a relationship between Patrick Mahomes and Sky Moore that's different than Noah Gray or vice versa? All those kinds of things start to play out. However, it all starts with understanding your data, and correlation can be one way to start understanding that stuff. So thank you for watching. Hopefully this was a fun video for you. You know, as a teacher, I love doing this. Whenever we have students ask questions or find out, oh my gosh, you are a Chiefs fan? I am too. You know, then the student and I talked about Marcus Allen, Joe Montana, Christian Okoye, Derek Thomas, a bunch of other players. But that was my era. I mean, that was when I started. I followed Marcus Allen from the Raiders to the Chiefs, and I've stuck with the Chiefs forever up here in Minnesota. I uh, would love to get to some of their games in Arrowhead someday. That would be a dream of mine. But um, my point is, you know, I just love working with students. Uh, and if I get an inspiration, I'll whip together another data set to just help students learn. And so that's what I did here. And hopefully you learned a little bit as well. So thanks for watching.